Good morning. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl, and welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. We're here in southwest Florida watching the sunrise over the trees, and this is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. And I'm a smidge late this morning because I walked to a much further beach this morning because I wanted to show you one of my favorite beaches. Uh, if you're joining me live, please say hello and let me know if you're crafting this morning. Hi, everyone. Um, I have some stuff to show you, but I'll wait a few minutes and I see some familiar names. I see Karen's here and Edna and Ruthie. Hi Gail, good morning, thanks for joining live. Hi Sharon. So we are north of Little Hickory Beach. Good morning Mar. Hi Rachel, thanks for joining me live. Hi Mona, hi Elena, hi Michelle. So glad you all could join me live this morning. We are at one of my favorite spots that you cannot get to by car. Uh, Beatrice, I was two minutes late this morning. <laughs> I'm usually not late. Hi Doan, hi Constance, happy Independence Day if you're celebrating. Hi Sherry. So normally we go to either Vanderbilt Beach to the south, then Bonita Beach is north of that, then um, Little Hickory Beach is north of that, and we're about a quarter to a half mile walk north of Little Hickory Beach and so I walked with the wagon, forgot my drink which kind of stinks because it's hot and it was a long walk. <laughs> Hopefully I'm not panting too bad. <laughs> Sorry if I am. But I wanted to show you this amazing spot. We're at an inlet um, so we pretty much have 270 degrees of waterfront around us. It's more water than land and we're at the tip of the piece of land with the water. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start by showing you the inlet here and then all the way out to the Gulf of Mexico. It is amazing. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. It's so peaceful here. So this is where I walked up. I walked the beach all the way and I took that little walkway to get here. And so these buildings are the very end of the land and if you see over there, there's the inlet that goes behind the strip of beach. And then depending on the tide, this is either little islands that you can walk on, or it's completely underwater, or they can be little peninsulas like this one. And then there's the Gulf of Mexico out here. And then we'll come back around in the circle. So there's the walkway I took from the regular beach. It is so quiet and peaceful here. Oh, this tree up here, oh, these trees over here. I've been coming to this beach for 10 years, as long as I've lived in Southwest Florida. And visitors always take seashells and decorate these trees, kind of like Christmas trees. Isn't this adorable? So these have been de getting decorated for, I don't know, years and years and years. So through storms and through hurricanes, whatever, if the shells come off, oh, there's a bunny right here. Hi, bunny. Hi there, little beach bunny. Good morning. Okay, I'll leave you be. I don't want you to get scared. So anyway, how's that? He was awfully close. I guess he didn't expect me to come up. <laughs> it is so quiet and peaceful here. It's very secluded, yes. Sometimes you can walk out on these islands. Let's go see how shallow the water is in this little spot. Maybe we can walk out there. Although I just left my purse. <laughs> but I want you to see how shallow it is. It's really easy to walk between these. So if I wasn't holding a camera and leaving my purse, you can see it only goes maybe calf deep right there, just in the little bit in the middle. And you could walk there if you went from behind those rocks, you could walk out there from this direction. But I have Dolly the Wonder Wagon with me, so it limits me to the little secluded areas like that that I can walk to this morning. Without Dolly or with leaving Dolly, I could easily get up there. So we'll come back to our little blanket. Whoops, 
and turn the camera back around. So now you can appreciate what you're actually looking at by seeing all the surrounding area. This is north. We're sitting north of Little Hickory Beach. So if you were to look it up online, you would look up Little Hickory Beach in Southwest Florida. No, Lisa, that's a great question. I did not do the photos for the book here. I did those at Barefoot Beach, which is between Bonita Beach and Barefoot. later in order to go to that beach sometimes which I'm tempted to do at times because I love it and there's so many things I could show you at that beach from that beautiful area that we photographed motif man and that was exciting we went through that jungly jungle like trail <laughs> probably was more dangerous than I realized too could have seen alligators or snakes for sure. Thanks Sherry. I am wearing Karen's okay with starting at 8 o'clock at times. Okay. Uh, I know not everybody is and it also makes my day later so it would be an exception to the rule not something we did all the time. I Today I'm wearing the fine Madeline tunic and it's a free pattern on my website. The yoke is done the same way as the mesh berry top but it is crocheted much longer and it has a second color hem at the bottom which you could do it all in one color if you preferred or you could do it in the contrast color like I did. This is Blue Danube colorway and this is Passionate Plum and I'm going to show you how long it is without being belted so you could totally wear that over leggings. Morning! Morning. So you could wear it, I mean you could wear it like I have today with jeans and a tank top or you could wear it over leggings but what I think is a fun way to style this one is to good morning is to put a belt on and you would put this at your natural waist so like my jeans sit here but I feel like my skinniest spot <laughs> is my natural waist right here so I put the belt on there pretty snug not tight but snug so it doesn't move around and then I'm going to blouse this up over the belt. My goal is to not see the belt anymore when I do this. You could do, you could make a knitter crochet belt for this and make it tie. That would work too. But look at how cute that looks bloused up. It's just a totally different look than the tunic. And I think that that's a really fun way to alternate um, a really simple garment that's super simple to make. So this morning for my styling, I added passionate plum tassel earrings to go with the passionate plum hem on the top because I thought it was just something fun to do. Uh, good morning, everyone. I see Lily and Nikki. It's so quiet here. Oh, the waves are on that side. Shoot, we should see if we could get over there. Oh, there's a dolphin. Okay, can you see the buoy up there? This side of the buoy, there's a dolphin breaching. About two-thirds between the shoreline and the buoy, I saw a dolphin. Thank you, Yana. Oh, did you see the pelican? He dove in for breakfast. <laughs> so fun. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Grace. So I'm not even sure what this inlet is called. Um, I'd have to look it up, but we're north of Little Hickory Beach, south of Lover's Key Beach. That might be Lover's Key, the next body of land there. I love dolphins too. They're so fun. No, no waves this morning. It is calm as calm can be. Yeah, totally different. 
but every day is different at the beach, right? <laughs> so is anybody else crafting this morning? Happy Independence Day, and it's your birthday month. Happy birthday. It is a beautiful beach, Elisa. The, the hard part for getting here is that there is no way to park to drive your car here. It's about, <coughs> it's about a half a mile walk from the last place you can park your car. So it's, it has its challenges for coming here, but it is so worth the effort when I do. I think this is one of the prettiest spots to come. Oh, happy birthday, Karen's husband. Lisa's finishing her Morgana edging. That's exciting. Happy birthday, Gloria. Sherry's working on the birch vest. Wonderful. So fun. Uh, Grace, Sahara Sunrise actually has some of the pure gold color in it. They actually coordinate really beautifully. Happy Independence Day, everyone. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. They're so easy to make. I have them in so many colors, and now I'm working on... Oh, I can show you what I made last night. I am working on adding my fine, chandel fine chandelier earrings in multiple colors. Because as I, lo I love having these in multiple colors, so I can just pick a pair that goes with whatever outfit I'm wearing every day. But I want to do that with the fine chandelier earring too. So last night at Knitting and Crochet Club, I made a pair in this colorway of bling. I haven't added the hardware yet, so they're not ready to wear. And I haven't blocked them, but this, uh, the bling is amazing in earrings. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, let's see. Can you see it sparkle in the camera? Not sure the sparkle's showing up, but I did it in this colorway. Can, maybe you can see the sparkle. Oh, you can see the <laughs> sparkle, awesome. So they take hardly any yardage to make. So if you have fine bling already and you have a little extra from any of your projects, great way to use up the leftover bling. Look at that, amazing. Or if you were gonna make Christmas presents or some sort of gifts, you could make a ton of these with a ball of yarn. And then I did a pair in Lilac Memories last night, which I think that'll be so cute too. So what I'd like to do is get them in as many colors as I can. So on any given day, I could just pop a pair in my ears that goes with my outfit, whether it coordinates or contrasts with whatever I'm wearing. And what else am I working on? Made some progress on my sun hat. It's not done yet, but it's getting there. And this is be so fresh linen yarn in half double crochet in the round which I think is giving me a beautiful texture that I love. <laughs> Elisa, Elisa you'll love this top. So easy to wear and again, with leggings and a top underneath it's you would just wear it unbelted and it's just so easy to wear. I feel like I hear a dolphin. <gasps> Did you see him? Oh am I in the way? He's closer now. Did you see the dolphin? Oh, I hope I wasn't, I hope my head wasn't in the way. He's closer now. Do you see him? He's over the rocks, but he's going that way. Dang it. Maybe we'll see another one. No. Boo. Our well, now that I showed you this area, we could go back up to the beach beach side. Or may, let's just walk and see if... I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to turn the camera around and see if we can get up here. With Dolly. Let's see if we, This is the way I came in. I know, we're going on a little adventure. Okay, so if we come back up here, this is where we saw the dolphin. Let's see if there's a way to walk down there. No, there isn't. There's no way I can get the dolly down here. No. So you see, this is, 
this is where I really wanted to come this morning because this is a piece of land that literally doesn't exist all the time. Depending on how much, what the tide is, this disappears. So how fun is that to go stand on land that doesn't always exist? Go ahead, it's fine. So it doesn't look like I could get the wagon down here, so we'll have to figure out another spot. Maybe we'll just go back to the beach. Oh, there's some pretty flowers down here that we don't see at our other beaches. That one. All right, and so there's another tree, oh, there's a, see that big tree up there? That one's all covered with seashells. This one has seashells on it too. So you can see that travelers have just all decorated these trees over time, which I think is so special. All right, it was worth a shot to go check out that one piece of land, but it's not gonna work for today. But you know what, if we come down here another time, every day is different and on a different day this little piece right here this could actually be connected and we could have walked out that way so we'll see we'll come here another time and see what we find just exciting huh yeah the trees with the shells in them are so special I love them um, if you recall I shot some photos in motif magic next to trees like that um, at the other beach, at Barefoot Beach. Let's see, I know I've missed a bunch of comments, so let's see if anybody has any questions. <laughs> and I just really briefly showed my stuff. So back to the hat. No, I haven't seen any turtles today, but we have tons of turtles here. So this hat I'm gonna make quite a bit longer because my inspiration for it is Jennifer Lopez style sun hats. She wears them with really large brims and so I've ordered wire to, to stabilize the hem and it's gonna be quite a bit wider than this. And once it's done, I can't wait to wear it. And I really would like to have a hat to wear here at the beach in the morning. Sometimes the sun's a little tough. So super excited to get that going. Hi Rachel, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad you could make it live for a bit. Yeah, it's a holiday. I'm sure not everybody has their regular schedule either. Yeah, the Elena shawl was one of them in Motif Magic, yes. Oh yeah, the hat will be available for the, uh, the hat pattern will become available when it's done, for sure. Yeah, you're just seeing a sneak peek. <laughs> Gotta write it first. Oh wow, that lady went up to her knees in water. To get to the little island. I was right, it was pretty deep. Good thing I didn't try it with the wagon. <laughs> Wide brims are awesome. You've done with raffia. Okay, cool. Well, this one's going to be with linen, and I bought the wire. It has not shown up yet, but as soon as it and I have time, I haven't finished the hat either, so it'll arrive at the right time and I'll finish the hat at the right time. And then I wanna design some sort of beautiful beadwork to go around to decorate the outside. So once you have it on, there'll be something beaded that sits around here. Can't think of the name of that decoration, but hat band maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but I remember I've had hats in the past that had beautiful beaded trim there. I think it's going to, I'm going to make it big. I mean, you could stop here if that's what you liked. You know, you're just doing increases like you do for a hat. So a dolly, dolly needs water wings. Yes, she does. <laughs> that's awesome. So you, if you're familiar with doing the increases in a hat, um, for example, I'm doing 12 increases per round. So I started with 12 then increase in every stitch, every two stitches, every three stitches, four, five, six, and so on. Then when, when you're done with the brim, you work even for a hat, right? If you're doing any kind of a beanie. And then to do the, the brim, you carry on with the increases you were doing for the crown. So I'm still doing 12 increases per round, but 
every 16, 17, 18 stitches, so on and so forth. So you could stop the hat at any time. If this is the size hat you wanted, you could stop here. I'm going to come out, probably do it at least double what's there now. This is Be So Fresh yarn. It's my 100% linen yarn and it's a sport weight. I'm doing this on a D crochet hook, which is 3.25 millimeter. So if you're familiar with hat construction, you could do this on your own now. I'd like to also do it in some stitch patterns, like an offset shell would be beautiful. Uh, but I thought starting simple was best. So yeah, if you're familiar with hats, that's how you do a sun hat. You really, if you've made a beanie, you already know how to make this. You're doing it in the same rate of increase as the crown. You're welcome, Lisa. I would, I would guess it's going to be one ball for the hat, but until I finish it, I can't, I can't tell you that number. Can't be certain, but um, you know, it's a generous 315 yards per ball, so I have a feeling that one ball is going to be sufficient. Head sizing is a problem for DJ. Well, that's the beauty of making a hat. You can decide how big you want to make it. Um, when trying to decide what size hat you need, you want to take the circumference of your head. And if you take the circumference of your head and divide it by pi, 3.14, it will tell you the diameter. The diameter is the number you need for knowing how big to make your crown. So I'm making this hat six, 18 inches in circumference. So I needed my crown, the flat area of shaping, I needed this to be six inches across. So, so if you have a larger head or a smaller head and you need larger or smaller than 18 inches, you would make your crown whatever diameter coordinates with whatever circumference of your head. And I know that sounds really mathy, but if you just, the measurement around divided by 3.14 is the size of the circle that you need. Simple. You don't even, you don't need a whole lot of math for that. It's a simple calculation right on your phone. That's all you need to be able to make a custom made hat for anybody. It doesn't matter if it's a man, a baby, a kid, a teenager, yourself, a friend. If you know this, you divide it by 3.14 and you get this. That's it. That's it. Secret. Uh, no longer a secret. <laughs> Super simple. It just it takes a lot of pressure off of knowing what t size hat to make. If you can just get that measurement on someone, take a tape measure, measure it, pull out your phone, divide that number by 3.14, done. It's so easy. Yes. And it could be anybody. And if you're not sure what size is normal for anybody, look it up. There's a, there's a sizing standard for newborn, baby, toddler, child, woman, man. The average woman is 18 inches in circumference. And then it's 20 or 22 for a medium or large men's. And then it goes down from there. But take out the calculator on your phone. The measurement around divided by 3.14 is the size of the circle you need for the crown. That's it. And then you work even for the rest of the hat. You're welcome. I'm so happy to share stuff like that. And even though I love math, I know not everybody does, so I love making math simple to encourage people that math is not as scary as it sounds. <laughs> so that is as simple as can be. And then you're working top down, so you make the length whatever size you need. You can try it on as you go. Does anybody have any questions about that? Oh, you're welcome, Grace. My pleasure. <laughs> Super easy. And hats are fun gifts. So pretty. So pretty. Good morning, Eleni. I got distracted by looking around and I missed comments. Sorry. <laughs> Your son likes math too, Carmen. <laughs> oh yeah, quick gifts for sure. You're not, you don't make any increases. Okay, so you make increases for the circle for the top. That's called the crown. The sides of the hat, no increases at all. 
Now, because I'm making a brim, yes, then you pick up where you left off on your increases up here. So I think I was doing my increases every seventh, up to every seventh stitch, so I started increasing every eighth stitch, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and so on and so forth. And I'll continue at that rate until I make the brim as wide as I want. But I don't have a pattern written, so if you're someone that needs a pattern, uh, please have some a little bit of patience. I will share the pattern when it's ready. But for those of you who are more um, comfortable with just getting the gist of it, that's the gist of it. Does that include slouchy hats too? No, slouchy hats have different uh, are are different, and there's different types of slouchy hats. You've got the beret style and just the oversized style. So. Um, sometimes slouchy hats are just made too big and then you make the brim the right size. That's one. Brim on it. That would be one way to do a slouchy hat. I have several hat patterns on my website including a slouchy hat pattern. Um, so if you would like to go see those now you can go to my website, go to the pattern page and look up patterns by hats and you can see all of them. I have knit hat patterns and crochet hat patterns there. One, at least one is slouchy and the rest of them are beanies, I think. No, yeah, and then some are done with in rows, some are done in rounds, so whatever your skill level is at, I have videos and free patterns for hats. Definitely. Oh, the top I'm wearing is Fine Madeline. Fine Madeline. And it's a free pattern on my website, too. For anybody that's joining late, I can stand up and show it again. It's actually a really long, simple tunic that I like to belt for a style variation. So it's super long, not quite dress length. If you went, kept going, you could make it a dress, I think. I don't know, maybe you could wear it. Yeah, you could wear it as a dress with a slip underneath. It would be a great beach cover-up, too. I added a contrast color for something fun at the end, but you don't have to do that either. Um, it is a sized pattern, so I've got lots of sizes on the free pattern. It also has video tutorial. It uses Be So Fine yarn. Now, I'm belting it at my natural waistline so that I can blouse up the top and I think that this is just a fun additional way to wear this top. I think it looks kind of dressy like this and you just blouse it up until you don't see the belt anymore. You could make that belt in yarn, you could crochet it or knit it, or you could wear a store-bought belt like I have on. Edna struggles with my podcast, why? I have some one of my favorite belt patterns is the belt that uh, you can see in the Celebration Poncho. It's just, it's just doing, uh, it's kind of like a shell. You do four treble crochets and then on the next row you slip stitch into the space between the four, chain four and three trebles in there so it gives you like this little shell kind of shape, not a shell. Um, kind of like an oval or like a bead shape and that's what I do for almost all belts that I make. I hope it's just um, problems with uh, connection service Edna. I'm not sure why you say you have trouble with the podcast. Hopefully it's just internet service and you'll be back later. But have a great day anyway. Oh you're welcome Grace. I'm glad you like it. Uh, the fine Madeline tunic is super easy. If you know how to do a granny square, you can easily make this. Oh, I hope you, hope you feel better, Edna. Well, we're almost out of time anyway, so let's take a minute here and look out at this magnificent view. I'm so glad that I could share this one with you today. So let's soak in the view, the sounds of nature, and set our intentions for this day.
Thanks everyone for taking time out of your special day. If you're celebrating, happy Independence Day. If you're not, happy Wednesday. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes with me. I hope you enjoyed our special beach adventure this morning. I hope you enjoyed the sounds of the waves, even though they were little, the dolphin, the nature, the scenery, chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.